Well, it's time. <clears throat> Class, is everybody sitting up tall in their chairs? <clears throat> yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. And you all have your nice sharp pencils? And yes, I would, teacher. I would like you to number your papers from 1 to 20. <laughs> this is too hard already. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible must be closed. This is not an open book test. Are you ready? I'm going to give you the questions first, and these are all true and false. So, hey, you've got some good odds. Are you ready? Question number one. God is controlling everything. True or false, right? This is true or false. Yeah. True or false. Number two. Jesus has paid for only the sins of believers. True or false? Smoking all over Cleveland. Okay, now number three. Your belief in Jesus Christ came as a result of your personal decision to believe. True or false? True or false? Number five. The more you sin, the more grace covers you. True or false? Number six. Forgiveness and justification are the same thing. True or false? Number seven. God's will is stronger than man's will. Number thirteen. Jesus Christ rules and reigns forever. True or false? Cam, Number... Cam quit peeking at curves. <laughs> Number 16. Evil was created by God. Is that true or false? You're not going to look at my paper. <laughs> Number 20. Jesus Christ undoes the whole work of Adam. True or false? I gotta resharpen my pencil. Oh, I guess I don't. The test is over. Oh, the, the test, test is over. That's it. I was mesmerized there for a moment. All right. All right. Now, now what do we do? We're going to process the answers. You're listening to AM 1000 WCCD Radio, programming for the soul of the city. It's time now for summer nights right here on WCCD. For the next two hours, we will take you inside of the heart of ministries and churches that are making an impact on the city of Cleveland. And now, with this week's featured ministry, here is the host of Summer Nights, right here on AM 1000, Ricardo Johnson. Thank you, Eric, and welcome to Summer Nights here on this Thursday evening, the soul of the city you're listening to. Glad to have you listening in, and uh, we have a good one going tonight. So right now, let's go to Kurt for Grace Cafe. My name is Kurt Downing, and I invite you to get your coffee, of course, your Diet Coke, your Bibles, concordances, and one more thing tonight, uh, a number two pencil. Later on in the broadcast, you will be challenged to do something we will put you onto a little bit later. Number two lead pencil. Right. Until then, enjoy with us a teaching from God's Word and some contemporary Christian music. Are you ready for a revelation of God's grace? You got the you got the duty now. You know what you have to do. If you're here again, and this is uh, Thursday night, and you've been with us every night this week, you know that it is getting really cool around here. What do you mean? Call your friends. Call your pastor. Call everybody you know. Tell them you got to turn this on. One thousand a.m. WCCD. You got to hear these guys. Yeah, this is Grace Cafe, and Grace Cafe is born out of a Bible study that started in our home and has um, expanded to include us uh, sharing with you the things that we discovered in the Word of God. And we're excited to be here again tonight on Thursday night. It's a little crazy around here. 
Oh, we, not we yet. We got lights flashing. <laughs> it won't I thought be. thought that lightning a, storm was last night, but it looks like it's oh, in here tonight. The, uh, the, the station's falling apart. It's no big deal. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we wonder. The sirens are coming. They're on to oh. us. Maybe you'll just hear dead silence. Who knows? We're here, though. Well, we are back We together. think we're on the air. Maybe we're not. Are, are, are we on the air, Ricardo? Or? Yeah, what? you guys are on the air. Hey, cool, man. <laughs> it, it was one of our many stations that we were having technical difficulties with. So. Oh, I've heard that one before. Technical. Everybody's having technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stations Sometimes in this Sometimes I wonder place. about you, but... Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a chronic thing. Well, I'd like to welcome you all to the broadcast and to interview, introduce to you one of our Bible teachers, one of the Midwest's most gifted and articulate Bible teachers, a man with his uh, head set on things above. And his feet are on the earth, that's true. He is the uh, co conference speaker and a writer and publisher and just uh, a phenomenal, gifted by God Keep kind, going. kind Don't. of teacher. Yeah. Who has written articles for critical <laughs> she, acclaim. I'm going to keep going. going. That's uh, all right. Go ahead. Published by the Cleveland Plain Dealer, the Atlanta, Atlantic Journal Constitution, and the Chicago Tribune. I think that's pretty impressive. And uh, if you've been with us for any length of time, you have probably become stunned at the authority by which he speaks. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Would you please welcome the one, the only, Martin Zender. Thanks for welcome. that introduction. Thank you. It's nice to be here. And uh, Grace Cafe is um, finishing up our fifth week this week of a five-week run, but it doesn't mean it's the end of Grace Cafe. Not at all. Actually, there is national syndication in our future. The world just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, have you? this show, we try to give you a little bit of everything, and we give you solid teaching. We make you think, don't we? We make you think. We get a little entertainment thrown in, uh, contemporary music, and we have fun. We can talk about anything. We take on the tough topics. Why can we do that? Because we have an incredible freedom and in that we are not tied to any denominational line. Isn't that great? We can go for it because we don't have to worry about losing our jobs. We all have jobs. We come here to let her rip to talk about that are rarely ever talked about, the big subjects. And like I said, we have nothing to lose. Call the station. We have nothing to gain. As Kurt said yesterday so appropriately, uh, we have no agenda. We're not trying to gather followers around us. In fact, we have everything to lose if you come to our uh, informal Bible studies because we're not going to get as much pizza. I mean, the pizza's going to go not go as far. The cookies aren't going to go as far. The coffee's going to run dry. The more people we have. So we have nothing to gain, everything to lose, but we want to talk. We sit around and gab about the Bible just like we do here at uh, Grace Cafe on the Air. I'm here with some great Bible students. One of them is Charlie Cronk, who I'm happy to see his face here. I mean, what a backup team we have here. These guys are always bailing me out. Charlie, welcome to Grace Cafe. Thanks. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, in one respect, we have everything to lose, but yet, in another respect, which is so much higher, as you join with us in praise and honor and giving glory to God, recognizing Him as God, we have much to gain from that. Yes, we do. Much to gain. And sitting, We'll sacrifice our pizza for that. Right. And sitting to my right, we have Mr. Ken Pridemore. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Oh, like All right. Godly wisdom. All right, come on. We yeah. do enjoy teaching. We do enjoy the Word of God. And we hope that you've been enjoying it also. Uh, we endeavor to bring out the subjects and topics that most of Christendom do not bring across their pulpits, do not bring across their in their Bible uh, teaching or their Sunday schools. Uh, we want people to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ. And this is our, this is our goal. If you want a great goal, that is a goal you should have in your life, is to bring others 
uh, with whatever knowledge that you have and bring them forth uh, into a deeper understanding of what Christ has accomplished for all of us. You know, when, uh, when people tell me they got religion, I send them a sympathy card. I send them a sympathy card. I have to tell you something about religion. The Greek word for religion is deesi daimonia. Deesi daimonia. The Greek elements of this word are dread teach. Dread teach. Deesi means dread. Daimonia is teach. It is also the root word of the word demon. Religion is a bad thing. Let me show you a scriptural context on that. In Acts 17.22, when Paul was at Mars Hill, he was uh, standing at the Areopagus, and he said, Men, Athenians, on all sides I am beholding how unusually religious you are. Ladies and gentlemen, that was not necessarily a compliment. They had statues, objects of worship. Idols of stone that they venerated. A pedestal was even there on which had been inscribed to an unknowable God. To whom then you are ignorantly devout, Paul says, this one I am announcing to you. Dread, ignorance, fear of an unknown God. These are all the marks of religion. Religion teaches men to dread what God might do to them unless they fulfill certain requirements. Religion is man striving to please God. That is the essence of all religion. Religion says, look what I can do. Religion has man saying, look what I can do. This is, a, is in opposition to the truth, which has God saying, look what I can do. Religion is man on his side, standing on his head for God. And there's a dread there because if you don't stand on your head just right, you'll be slam dunked on your head. You'll be damned. It's fear. It's dread. The truth is that God, in essence, is standing on his head for man. He is presenting man. Christ crucified. It's even called his approach present. In Ephesians uh, two, Christ is the approach present. It's God's gift to humanity. God is saying in Christ, look what I can do. This is the end. Christ is the end of all religion. It's the end of all dread. It's the end of all men hoping to accomplish something in fear of what might happen to them if they don't. Regardless of how it likes to think of itself, modern Christianity is another religion and I'm going to tell you why in what aspect I mean that I'm very serious and this is a very serious topic we're getting into tonight but it has a diabolical twist to it why do I say it's another religion because Christianity pays salvation now this isn't the way it's supposed to be but this is what it has become this is not the pureness of Christ this is a twisted thing that has been called Christianity. It pays salvation to those able to meet a predetermined standard. Hang with me. I told you that this is the essence of all religion. The essence of all religion is man meeting a standard in order to please God in a realm of dread. Where other religions demand human sacrifices, some religions demand uh, monotonous prayers or going on a, uh, a pilgrimage. The Christian religion demands something. Yes, it does. It demands one basic thing, wisdom. You must be wise enough to choose Christ or you will not be saved. You will be damned. Some religions have a long list of things to do. The Christian religion has a short list, but it's still something you must do or be damned. You must exercise your wisdom to choose Christ. Why do I say that the Christian religion is worse than the others? Because it is the most deceptive 
of all. How? Because unlike other religions, Christianity boasts the name of Christ. The only name under heaven by which men are saved. This gives it a legitimacy. I mean, hey, these guys are talking about Christ. So it lends it a legitimacy that the other religions lack. Buddhism, Hinduism, they, they lack the legitimacy of the name of Christ. But Christ is wrongly presented. Rather than presenting Christ for what He is, which is a Savior, an actual Savior, the Christian religion presents Him as a potential Savior. This is very subtle. Please pause and think about this. This is the subtle and really the satanic twist of the Christian religion. Changing Jesus Christ. Now you really got to watch the hands here. The magician moves his hands very quickly. You have to slow down the film and watch where the hands are going. They are changing Jesus Christ from one who actually saves apart from and in spite of man to one who whose cross is but the weaker side of an incomplete equation that requires man's cooperation. According to the major, the major tenet of the Christian religion, I know it's going to deny this, but it's nonetheless true. Whether it denies it or not doesn't matter. This is nonetheless true. Christ did not save anyone at the cross. I know that sounds stunning. Please follow it through with me. According to the Christian religion, you know this, I think you will verify this with me, Christ only paved the way to salvation. His work, rather than being a completed work to which nothing needed to be added, nothing, nothing, no, the way it's presented is now it only made it possible, his death made it possible for man to save himself. Because man now had to make, had to make, had to make, or else be lost, a wise decision to, quote, accept Christ. And what does this do? Think about it, please. This leaves the final responsibility for salvation not on Christ, but on man. And this is the most beloved heresy of Satan. This is the essence of all religion, responsibility for salvation left to man rather than to God. Now, I know they say, they say, it's all of God, it's all of God. But that's hypocrisy, because it's not all of God if I have to do something before it can be true. We've told you here that Jesus Christ died, and my belief is a reaction to what He did. It's a reaction of my already being saved at the cross. It's not the cause of my salvation, but that's the subtle deception. That's where you have to watch the hands. This marks religion, every religion. Religion takes attention from God's work and directs it to man's work. And Christianity does that. It's very subtle. But the beautiful thing about it, the beautiful thing to the adversary anyway, is that Satan has fastened to this Christ's name. He's fastened to this religion, and it is another religion, the name of Christ. That's why it's so deceptive. Because of this tactic, Satan has used Christianity to draw millions of good people who would otherwise be turned off by these other religions that have you doing things and making, making, making pilgrimages and uh, tearing your clothes. And they, he's, he's taken them and turned them on to another religion that still has the same heresy of salvation by man. You see, it's the same heresy, but other people that, people that wouldn't be drawn to these other more obviously wrong religions are drawn to this subtle deception. This deception is so sweet that those who are enslaved by it have no idea they're in bondage. They think they're free. And I know that they, they're going to deny, they're, they're gonna deny what I'm saying. That they will deny their ensnarement only proves this religion's potency. The Christian religion is a drug so powerful that the mind under its influence is altered. It can no longer detect truth. Not only this, but the truth passes near it, and the mind calls it error. Truth is called error. That's how, de that's how terribly this deception has overtaken the minds of those ensnared by it. The powers of darkness want men ignorant of God. 
you have to agree with me there. How do they accomplish this? How do they keep men ignorant of God? How do they accomplish it most effectively? Not by obvious evils. This is the thing. We're looking for obvious evils. We think Satan is using these obvious evils to turn people from God, like, like diseases and famine. But these things drive men toward God. Here's how he does it, and it's so subtle. He occupies men in self-centered exercise. That is religion. Religion is self-centered exercise. How can I choose Christ? What can I do to be saved? And then he uses those enslaved by the religion to defame God's character before the rest of the world. Folks, the powers of darkness can do nothing to deny Calvary's victory. What is the victory? That through the cross, Colossians 1.20, God is going to reconcile the universe to himself. But these powers of darkness can do a lot to keep people from knowing about that victory. Examine the statement of faith at your church to confirm that statement. Denise is going to give you a little quiz. Get your number two lead pencils. We're going to be taking a quiz. I think you need number two pencils. And uh, we're going to find out just how far you've been taken from the truth. From what you said there, it sounds like religion has, or Christianity has taken its adherents and making them like the king in his new clothes. They think that they're dressed in, in uh, what Christ has done, but if you look deeper, they find you find that it's man's work. It's what's underneath is man. That's what's behind it. And tonight, I believe, folks out there listening that if you listen tonight, we're going to go into the scriptures and we're going to expose the nakedness of Christianity. Well, we worship at the shroud of Elvis And we're waiting for that money from Ed McMahon And we're drinking from the Perrier fountain of youth while we follow what the daily horoscope saying taking lethal doses of mtv delving into pet psychiatry trying to treat cancer with the fruit juice cure and waiting for the beatles reunion tour because it's a great big stupid world and we're feeling kind of queasy as it turns around great stupid world and we're never really sure if we're up or down we're on a dirt clod out in space where it stops nobody knows if Jesus came back today they try to book him on the Oprah with a free show cause it's a great big stupid great big stupid great big stupid That's a funny song, but I hope you caught those lyrics. If Jesus came back today, would he be revered and honored? Would he be lifted up? Or would we try to book him on the Oprah Winfrey show? We'll be back in just a few minutes with more of Grace Cafe. But remember, you have to get your number two pencil sharpened. Lead pencil. Lead pencil sharpened. You need a notebook. And it's going to be a pop quiz. Spiral notebook. A pop quiz at, uh, remember in school when you did this before? We'll be back in just a couple of minutes, and you'll, we'll see exactly if whether or not you're following the traditions of men, or whether or not you believe the scripture. It's a great big stupid world. Huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. You're listening to Summer Nights here on WCCD. You never know what we're coming up with next. Just stay tuned, okay? We, we keep you on the edge here. You're listening to Summer Nights on WCCD. It's the soul of the city. We are back with Grace Cafe. The number to call if you want to get involved in the conversation right here and right now is one 888 281-1110. Not right now. At the top of the 8 o'clock hour, we want you to call that number. It's one 281 1110 And also to get in touch with the ministry of Grace Cafe, you can call them at 440 area code 230 2000. Now let's go back to Kurt from Grace Cafe. Well, welcome back. How do you uh, like the pressure? How do you like that? Hey, do you like that? It's no problem. Oh, man, as you're too cool. As long as I got cool. Ken and Doug over here on my right, I, they can stand me up a little bit. Denise, I think it's supposed to go to you. You have something for us. Well, it's time. <clears throat> Class, is everybody sitting up tall in their chairs? <clears throat> yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. And you all have your nice sharp pencils? All right, yes, I would, teacher. I would like you to number your papers from 1 to 20. Do, this is too hard already. <laughs> the Bible must be closed. This is not an open book test. Are you ready? I'm going to give you the questions first, and these are all true and false. So, hey, you've got some good odds. Are you ready? Question number one. God is controlling everything. True or false, right? This is true or false, yeah. True or false. Number two, Jesus has paid for only the sins of believers. True or false? Don't pull off the concentration. <laughs> okay. It's smoking all over Cleveland. Okay, now number three, your belief in Jesus Christ came as a result of your personal decision to believe. True or false? Your belief in Jesus Christ came as a result of your personal decision to believe. True or false? That was still three. She didn't repeat that before. <clears throat> Number four. Paul the Apostle completes the word of God. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. True or false? True or false? Paul the Apostle completes the word of God. We just did that one. Don't be giving it away. <laughs> Number five, the more you sin, the more grace covers you. True or false? Number five is, the more you sin, the more grace covers you. True or false? Number six, forgiveness and justification are the same thing. True or false? Number seven, God's will is stronger than man's will. True or false? Number eight. God the Father is responsible for crucifying Christ. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's... True or false? I know what I'm putting down. Number nine. Jesus loses the majority of humanity to Satan. How are you doing, Charlie? Can I copy off you? Yeah. Okay. There will be a demerit point for that. Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought it. Number 10. God wants you to follow the Ten Commandments. True <laughs> or false? Number 11. Jesus Christ was a successful Savior. True or false? Number 12, God is working to return all creation to himself. True or false? How you doing, Kurt? Number 13, Jesus Christ rules and reigns forever. True or false? Number Ken, Ken, quit peeking at Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Number 14, Kurt, Kurt. God has chosen to reveal his truths to the foolish and unlearned according to man's wisdom. You may want to repeat I put that, that one in there. Yeah. Yeah. I put that one in there for us. We're reading along with here. <laughs> repeat, that. Repeat, it. repeat it. God repeat has that. chosen to reveal his truths to the foolish and unlearned. 
true or false? <clears throat> Number 15. God is conciliated to mankind and no longer holds our sins against us. Hmm. 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 Number 16. Evil was created by God. Is that true or false? You're not going to look at my paper. <laughs> Number 17. The earthly Jesus preached a message that was for all mankind. Number 17 again. The earthly Jesus preached a message that was for all mankind. Number 18. God has control of every step you take. Everyone? Everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are really pretty Google easy if they've been listening. Yeah, I mean, they're they're really consequential. We, we have new listeners every day, probably. That's right. Number 19. The false gospel Paul warned us about was a gospel of the grace of God with human works added in. Mm. I think I know that one. About. I think I know that one. Number 20. Jesus Christ undoes the whole work of Adam. True or false? Now, you're probably pretty sweaty, so I did throw in a Gosh, bonus question. Is, oh, bonus question. Good, good. Oh, I get, we get goodness. extra credit, right? Before you read it, though, you have to... This is a trick question, I think, this Ooh. last one. No, I Denise wouldn't so. do that. Yeah, I would. No I think okay, it's a sorry, trick question. It. All right, go ahead, teach. Eternity is a very long time. <laughs> True oh, or false? I got to resharpen my pencil. Oh, I guess I don't. The test is over. Oh, is the, the test, test is over. That's it. I was mesmerized there for a moment. All right. All right. Now, now uh, what do we do? We're going to process the answers. Any new eraser. <laughs> what if I went outside the boxes with my pencil? You know, the one thing about taking this is that we're going to back up every answer we give in the scripture, and the challenge will be for you to b whether or not you're going to believe it. Number one, God is controlling everything. Is that true or false? What did you guys put? True. 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 Your backup verse is Ephesians 1.11. Number two, Jesus has paid for only the sins of believers. True or false? False. 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 He came to. Yeah, go ahead. Well, for our, not for our sins only, but the sins of the whole world, right? Yeah. Okay, where is that? We've got one in First Timothy two six. We've got First John two two. We've got Second Corinthians five eighteen. Second Corinthians five eighteen is really a good one. Yet all is of God who conciliates us to Himself through Christ, and is giving us the dispensation of the conciliation. How that God was in Christ, conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them, and placing in us the word of conciliation. I think the next verse after that says the whole world. You know, I, I just thought of something on the first question. If people answered yet yeah, true, that God is controlling everything, that denies free will. It sure does. So if you, if you mark true on question one, you no longer believe in free will, which is good. Because free will is false. I'm sorry, Denise, go ahead. I, uh, I know, I know. Your number three, your belief in Jesus Christ came as a result of your personal decision to believe. I think that was a trick question. Okay, explain your answer. Yeah, well, what did you guys nice put on sermon. that? Yeah, what did you guys put on that? I put true. I would say true also, because is we, do make we do a make a personal decision. choice. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. is it from a free will? Yeah, see, and... Where does hey, the rain come from? And if yeah, you answer right. true on the first one, then you don't believe in, I mean, then you believe in free, uh, don't believe in free will, so then you can answer correctly. Right. Your belief in Jesus Christ is a result of God's gift to you. God you gave me. Yeah, I made a decision, a but decision. it was caused from outside, right. outside force, so it wasn't free. We should probably, uh, if anybody didn't hear that, the teaching on free will, we have the tapes available 
here I am using your test for a promotion. <laughs> I'm sorry, it wasn't that cheap. That's shameless. I know, shameless. Go ahead, next. Number four, Paul the Apostle completes the Word of God. Bet you didn't know that. That's true. I, yeah, I got yeah. true on that. And that's uh, Colossians 1.25. Right, most people think Revelations is the end of the story. Well, it's, it's the end of the Bible, but... Yeah, it's the only end of the Bible. There's a greater revelation in Paul. Number five. The more you sin, the more grace covers you. True. 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 Romans. It, it covers you exceedingly. Through the roof, as we say around here. That's right. Romans 5.20. Romans 5.20 says through the roof? Yeah, it says through the roof. Do you roof. have the living Bible? It, <laughs> I, have, I have the... It's in Second Opinions. I told you that. Oh, yeah. Second Opinions, Chapter 1. Okay. Do we want to read that one? Or? Go ahead, read it. In Romans 5.20. Yet the law came by the way that the offense should be increasing. Yet where sin increases, grace super exceeds. That even as sin reigns in death, thus grace also should be reigning through righteousness for life eonian. Oh, good. Through okay. Jesus Christ our Lord. Good. I got that right. <laughs> okay, number six. Forgiveness and justification are the same thing. False. False. Okay, what are you using? What What am I using? What's your proof text? Um, Romans 8. 8, 28. 28. What's 8, yeah. 28? Well, let's take care of Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, Go ahead, read Now, we are aware that God is working all together for good of those who are loving God, who are called according to the purpose that whom he foreknew, he designates before Excuse him. me, what does that have to do with this forgiveness and justification? <laughs> Could be a typo. Well, it, you know what? Oh, it's it. common sense here. Maybe I got Wait this written down. We're no, it, looking it, at the it, wrong one. No, wait, this is pure common sense. This is pure common sense. To be, to be forgiven, we're assuming you're wrong. You did something wrong, and we're going to overlook it. But if you're justified, you can't be forgiven, because if you're justified, you did right. This is common sense one. I mean, that's common sense. It's just not, you know, actually, widely you, understood. Actually, you can find the answer in your local dictionary. Your local dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard. <laughs> yeah, the dictionary. What, what street is our local dictionary at? Could be in your neighbor's house. Do you house, have an address? Down there at the bookstore. <laughs> yeah, look up you for may have one Yeah, in the look house. up. Right, use the dictionary for that. Let's go to number seven. God's will is stronger than man's will. Oh, God, I hope so. It is. True. And do we have one for that, proof text for that? That was Romans 9.18. Romans 11.32. Romans 9.16 works there, too. Okay. But that does away with free will. Anybody that answered true to that, mm -hmm. that does away with free will. Okay. Because free will says that man's will can overcome God's will. Number eight, God the Father is responsible for crucifying Christ. That was a shock to me. Oh, yeah. That's true. That is true. It pleased him to crush him. Isaiah 53, that's one verse. Acts 3.18, Acts 4.27, Acts 2.23. Just people, write them yeah. down. You can read them later. Right. People get messed up there because they see all the intermediaries that were at work, like the high priest, the uh, Pontius Pilate, Judas, all the intermediaries, but God was pulling the strings on that one mm -hmm. and on everything else, for that matter. Number nine is Jesus loses the majority of humanity to Satan. Awesome. Mm hmm Be careful. If you believe in eternal torment, you got to put true on that. And I wonder how you feel marking true on that. I, I mark false because that's absurd. Absolutely ludicrous. One of the big verses. That's ludicrous. That's, it's worse than that. I can't even describe it. But, you know, I, I think people probably put, put false. I mean, anybody would say false. But if you think about it, if you believe in eternal torment, you have to put true. Ugh, go to ten. Well, also, we have to remind everybody that we did a whole week on eternal torment and discussed one of the words that was commonly mistranslated, eternal, is actually the Greek word, I own. And the tapes and are available. And you need to know that or else you're going to fall for the distorted idea that that word means eternal or everlasting. And if you call right now, we will be able to give you these tapes at no charge. Call today. Call toll-free 1-888-281-1110. Operators are standing by. I'm sorry. No. Then you, then he you'll told be me he was going to 
He's kidding. Because really, we don't have any of the Ginsu knives or anything here ready to go. So just we have to wait. <clears throat> but the scriptural yeah. reference reference for uh, the answer to nine, the answer to nine was false. And First Timothy two five, six and seven, and First Timothy four ten. Mm -hmm. That verse is my absolute favorite verse. First Timothy four ten. God is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. Cool. You know, if they get our tapes that you've offered, they'll be able to max this test. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, number 10. God wants you to follow the Ten Commandments. Oh. Oh, he used to. He used to. He used to, he used to used want to, to but uh, there's a better way now. But you'd have to be a Jew back then, too. Yeah. You see. I think Ken already read the scripture verse on that, too. Mm-hmm. Romans what do we got? Let's 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 dig on those a little bit. Yeah, let's take a look at those real quick. Romans three twenty. Let's see. Romans three twenty says, "By works of law, no flesh at all shall be justified in his sight, for through law is the recognition of sin." That's your startup. <laughs> and Romans five twenty, yet law came in by the way that the offense should be increasing. We had that in mm. another one. In other words, for the people that haven't heard this before, the law was given intentionally to create sin to increase. So following the Ten Commandments, the way our flesh operates, makes us covet and sin all the more. And that was intentional because God wanted to show that flesh could not please God and that we definitely needed a Savior. So the answer is true then, right? And if you like the four tapes describing this teaching, you can call one triple notes here. We do have four tapes on that, on the Ten Commandments that we did a couple of weeks ago. Let's go to number 11. Jesus Christ was a successful Savior. I think it is finished is one of those verses that tells you that that's true. But again, if you believe in eternal torment, you can't mark true there. If you believe in eternal torment, scratch off true and put false. Jesus Christ was a successful Savior. False. If you believe in eternal torment. Second Corinthians five eighteen and nineteen is your proof text there, John nineteen thirty. Okay, twelve. God is working to return all creation to himself. Never saw that verse before either. That is true. That's Colossians one twenty, Romans eleven thirty six. Okay, number thirteen. Jesus Christ rules and reigns forever. What did you guys put down? <laughs> I put false. Oh, that's a trick question. To, that's yeah. a trick question to a lot of people. Well, explain yourself. Because of the word eternity. That's where the big problem comes from. Well, if, if he reigns forever, then uh, there's always going to be in subjection in the universe. The universe will never be completed if there's people that constantly need being reigned over. You better give the proof text on that. It's First uh, Corinthians. First Corinthians fifteen twenty five. Christ must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. See, he doesn't reign forever. Until, until. right. He reigns so well that he uh, eliminates the need for reign. And again, that word eternal that's often put for that, the Christ will reign forever and ever. It's for the eons of the eons it's uh we talked about that on during eternal torment week those tapes are also available yeah i hope these people that have been uh following along with us uh throughout the the five weeks here are starting to recognize these uh things c crawling back on all the detail meticulous detail that uh we went over trying to really hammer these points home mm-hmm Okay, number 14, God has chosen to reveal his truths to the foolish and unlearned. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, that's well, Charlie, Kurt, and Ken are proof of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? 1 Corinthians 1, 27, 28, 29, and there's a bunch of other places too. God gets a big kick out of making people that don't have theological degrees <laughs> know what's going on. I don't yeah, know. right. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. 15. God is conciliated to mankind and no longer holds our sins against us. That is true. That is phenomenal, too. That is phenomenal. Because That's the first thing you hear is that you're supposed to realize what a terrible, rotten person you are. 
before God can be nice to you. You have to acknowledge you're a, a sinner. And we are sinners. But mm -hmm. something's been done. Something huge. Something has huge has been done with the sin question. Namely, Christ took the sins upon himself, the sins of the world. And now, God looks at us through Jesus Christ. It's a funny and we're thing. still begging God to be nice to us. You know, we're begging God. We're still in fear of God. As a reminder, that conciliation is half of the word reconciliation meaning that God did it by himself. We didn't have to be active participants. He did it. And he's at peace with man because of it. I wasn't even born when he did it. Right. That was a long time before I was born. What's that, Second Corinthians 5? 5? 518. Okay. Same big verse. Number 16. Evil was created by God. That is true. True. Isaiah 45, 7. That's Num easy. Number 17. The earthly Jesus preached a message that was for all mankind. In his earthly ministry... Jesus' message was false. that for all mankind. That's no, false. that is false. That was not for all mankind. Matthew fifteen twenty four, oh, and among other places. He was sent. He was not sent. Jesus Himself said this. I was not commissioned except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There it is. Mm -hmm. Romans fifteen eight is another one. Mm -hmm. Paul said that Jesus came to confirm the patriarchal promises. There's a lot He did not say when He was on earth. He saved some of the depths. Of, he saved saved the depths of grace for Paul. And mm -hmm. keep that always in mind when you're reading the uh, four accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Keep that in mind that Christ came only to Israel. Then you'll begin to understand why he said some of the things he said. Yep. Number 18, God has control of every step you take. That can't be true if I have a free will. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending <laughs> on how you look depending at it. Depending on how you look at it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true. I well, think that's good news. It is good news. That means that I can't ultimately, in an absolute sense, I can't screw up. In an mm -hmm. absolute sense, I cannot screw up. Right. Even your so-called screw-ups are things that God is using. Yeah, He's right. using it. Right. Mm -hmm. you He's can't, productively using. You can't get yourself so lost that you can't be found in Satan. Right. 18, that's right. Proverbs 16, 9 and Proverbs 20, 24. You need your proof text there so you know we're not making this up. Number 19, the false gospel Paul warned about was a gospel of the grace of God with human works added in. Oh, true. Let's, let's that read that true. one. True. Go ahead. Can the you Galatians, the Galatians, yeah, two probably eight. in Galatians, right? Yeah, I think Galatians it's Galatians 2.8. Two eight. Two eight. Right. Keep going. That doesn't talk about No, that doesn't talk about it. Oh. That was oh. a lead-in. That was, that was a lead-in. Lead okay. That was a drum roll. Let's just start that one more time again. I have been in... Well, better yet, let's go to the proper verse. Right. <laughs> hey, now there's a concept. <laughs> that is Galatians 2 8. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, time the here. answer to that 19, that question 19, is true. And we have a proof text of Galatians 2 8. I think Galatians 1 verse 7 is, 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 is what we need that some who are disturbing you want to distort the evangel of Christ. Mm. They want to distort it. And the way they did that was um, telling the Galatians that they needed to add things. And Paul brings that out in Galatians chapter 3, uh, verse 1. He calls them foolish because someone was bewitching them that they uh, would add works of law to the hearing of faith. He called them foolish for even listening to anybody who would try to introduce works of law. How, would, how would you describe works of law? What would you say that is? Oh, trying to please God. Well, he was there. I think he was talking about the Mosaic law, but uh, any kind of thing we have to do to earn God's favor is a law in itself. Whether it's baptism or repentance, if it becomes a, a ticket to ride, then it's a law. Right. Okay. Uh, number 20, Jesus Christ undoes the whole work of Adam. You know what the huge word there is? Whole. Mm -hmm. The whole work of Adam. I put true. I put true. <laughs> and uh, if he does, that uh, disproves eternal torment. Because eternal torment says that he's not going to bring back everybody Adam condemned. Well, a lot of people have read that verse that he reconciles and then uh, Christ the first fruits and then those that are Christ that is coming and then comes the consummation. That's 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty-two, And they don't realize that there's a third group in there. Then, right, then cometh the, the consummation when he abolishes death. But uh, a good proof, the proof passages there are Romans chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. That through Adam, the whole race was condemned and locked up in sin. 
and through Christ the whole race is justified and delivered from sin. It's very simple. It's a perfect parallel in uh, Romans 5, 18 and 19. The backup verse is 1 Corinthians 15, 22, 21 and 22. Okay, now. I got that one right. That's mm -hmm. good. Did you guys get that all right? <laughs> all except for Galatians. I messed up on that one. Well, <laughs> can you know. Factor again. You have to stay in during recess. Remember, God loves to use our foolishness. <laughs> okay. Eternity is a very long time. Is that true or false? False. One, two, three. It's false. false. Eternity is not a long time. It has nothing to do Boy, with time. Eternity has nothing to do with time. This test seems like it's went on forever. <laughs> <laughs> Only now, for an eon. Oh, oh for an eon. <laughs> if, you want to talk, if you want to learn about time and eternity, we did that in Eternal Torment Week. We got, some, we got ten great tapes from that week that'll, help, that'll really make God's plans for humanity make sense to you. We, we disproved Eternal Torment. I mean, I'm not bragging. We just did it. If with you the, did it, it's not bragging. Well, we, we disproved it with the Scripture. It's not true. If you have been, uh, if eternal torment has been a nightmare to you, if it's something that you, um, you know, your, your, your dad died, uh, an unbeliever, what kind of comfort do you have? Do you harbor some kind of hope that somehow God's going to save him? Well, you no longer need to harbor that hope. You can expect it. Because God is the Savior of all mankind. And there seems to be a lot of verses in Scripture that seem to say otherwise. We took those verses one by one. We didn't hide from any verse, did we? Mm -hmm. We took them one, on, one by one and we uh, showed how a lot of the verses have been twisted and skewed to teach this false doctrine. We want to make sure that you can grade your papers and uh, you call into the radio station tonight, and if you got more than 15 of these right, you're going to win a Grace Cafe coffee mug. Who? Oh. Yes, you are. That means you are... Are you serious? Yeah. You yeah got... I'm doing them custom oh, for custom all the coffee. winners. If you got... But, you know, you got to be telling the you truth. you got to send in your... Well, they don't have a paper. Yes, they got to send in their yeah, paper. They gotta, yeah, you got to write in the number 1 to 20, mail it to P.O. Box 33345, Cleveland, Ohio, 44133, and we will send you a mug. But there's more. We're not done. We'll come back. The quiz is done, but we're not. Come back in a couple minutes for more of Grace Cafe. You're listening to Summer Nights on WCCD. The now, keep in mind that this is the relative right perspective. Right we're seeing things, we're seeing action on a stage. We're not looking in the, these passages, of, we're not looking at the cause of things, like why some people are responding and why some people aren't. Because, in, in fact, absolutely no one can respond to Jesus Christ unless God first gives him or her an ability to do so. For Jesus Jesus himself admitted this. He said, No one can come to me if ever the Father who sends me should not be drawing him. John 6, 44. So nobody can come, you see, unless God draws them. But on this stage, forget the absolute viewpoint for now. Forget why some people are answering the call, why others aren't. On the stage, this gospel of the circumcision is presented as a challenge as an imitation, as an if-then proposition. He presented it that way because it's a mixture of law and grace. So relatively speaking, in the Israelite gospel, it requires human cooperation. God wanted it presented that way. And again, the initial purpose was to demonstrate human failure. God needed a people who were convinced that they could justify themselves by works of law. They, have to, they had to be convinced that they could do it. And God accommodated them. He put out the law as though, you know, why can't you do this? Come on, I gave you a law. All you have to do is follow it. Get busy. In the meantime, it's wink, wink. God's like, hmm, well, he knows how that story's going to end, but it, 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 he has to do it this way. He's not playing games. This is the wisdom of God to make a demonstration. So that he could later point to these people, utter failures, by the way, and say, see, by works of law, no flesh at all shall be justified. I mentioned that verse several times. It's Romans 3.20.
And I'll rem I remind you again, Israel was a gigantic demonstration of the failure of flesh. And again, Christianity hasn't gotten that memo. And they ignorantly, as well as anachronistically, they still attempt to follow law. So the question arises now, does God cast Israel away now that she has fulfilled her mission as a bad example? How would you like to be that to be your mission? What's your mission in life? I'm a bad example. Okay, like, what do you mean? I'm an example of the inability of flesh to do the precepts of God. Uh, is your life miserable? Yeah, pretty much. Why do you persist? Because I'm, an because I'm an Israelite, and this is what I do. I persist in my ignorance. All right. God does not cast away Israel. He is merciful, true to himself, true to his promises. He will fulfill the promises he made to Israel. He will give her a new heart. In the meantime, in the meantime, in the gospel of the uncircumcision, gospel given to Paul, believers are chosen first, then called. I'm not making that up. Sounds like I am. I don't make things up. That's Romans 8.30. Here's the verse. Now whom he designates beforehand, and we know when that happens, right? Before the disruption of the world. Whom he designates beforehand, these he calls also. And whom he calls, these he justifies. Whom he justifies, these he glorifies also. So having temporarily set Israel aside, if you want to know the details of that, read Romans chapter 11. It's all there in juicy detail. God was now ready to launch an evangel that was presented from the start as a message of total grace. And how much more grace can you get where you're designated beforehand, it's already done, and only the details remain. Nothing left but details after that. Once God has chosen you, designated you beforehand from before the disruption of the world, it's only the details now. And sometime in your life, you will be called. Paul's radical language here. Yeah, whom he designates beforehand, these he calls also. This is not an if-then proposition. It's not something you accept in order for it to be true. This is something true that you accept. Wow, I think I uttered a profundity there. I think it deserves repetition. Paul's Gospel, it's not something that you accept for it to be true. It's something true, already true, that you accept. I'd like to top myself on this show, but I don't think I'm going to risk it because because that was pretty good. <laughs>